Hello, beautiful people, and welcome, hi, to the Gaming post-release analysis. I'm recording this as of three days left on the banner, so it's possible this doesn't go out before the banner is over. If that's the case, I apologize. As usual, for the post-release analysis, what we do is we go through the pre-release, we talk about what we got right, what we got wrong, what we missed. His performance will vary a lot, depending on which team you end up using for him, and which supports you have available for him, and all of that. However, there's a lot of different building blocks that you can use to make him a lot better and if you have all of those pieces he's actually pretty damn good i definitely do still think that there is a big difference in terms of at the very least of versatility if you have the building blocks versus if you don't that being said there is one team that i think i underestimated and we will we will get to that in a little bit if i use navy e it can let me do two deluke e's right and vape both of them if i use Kaya e i can only do one so generally, when you have faster hitting pyro attacks, you can't really do meld because there's no cryo character that applies enough cryo to always reapply cryo in between your pyro hits. And once you start applying pyro on the enemy, It takes multiple hits of your cryo attacks to remove it, so it's basically Jover. I, I do want to say, maybe using Deluke to show this wasn't the best choice because there are technically Deluke combos that you can do with Melt, even, even pre Shenyun. It's just that they generally tend to rely on being able to do Dragon Strike to be good, which is why I don't tend to mention them very much because I think that if you're relying on Dragon Strike to be able to not suck, it ain't looking too hard. But I, I probably should have... Uh, should have showed it, sh shown it with a different pyro character. So Gumming needs to have a lot of personal damage to basically make up for that. And the reality is that at C0, his personal damage is a bit, in my opinion, a bit too low for that to be all that great. But it is actually good enough at High Constellation that it makes it a pretty good team. So that's like the first option. Okay, okay. so I guess we can we can get into this a little bit more. I do still stand by that. I think that when you're when you're doing setups with uh, an animal unit with gumming. Uh, my gumming is at constellation 5, not constellation 6. It looks impressive because he does a low amount of numbers and each number is a big number. So it like, it looks like it's really good. But in terms of DPS, it's just, it's, it's fine. But yeah, if you're, if you're trying to do both a Pyro Swirl and Snapshot Rosaria, you start losing Bennett uptime, which means that you don't get that many plunges. Plus you don't actually even have that much VV uptime because you have to do Kazuha before Rosario, otherwise you can't use Rosario's E. Well, as you can see, right, now we basically don't have any buffs anymore, and after, like, a few plunges, we go from doing 190k to 70k. And as you can see, I don't actually have enough ER in this team. Right, I need to. I need to have a little bit more. Anyways, point being, you run out of juice very quickly, so you have a good amount of front-loaded damage, but it's not like an insane amount, and you run out of juice very, very quickly when you do setups like these. And so, while they are good once you reach the damage thresholds to be able to kill an enemy hundred to zero with just three or four plunges, then the team will be pretty good because it can clear waves fast enough, and damage that goes past that in rotations often tends to. Be be wasted as long as you reach the breakpoints of doing enough damage in one rotation to kill the first wave or the second wave there's generally not a need to get a lot more than that if we should actually wait for it to completely get up before we start and he doesn't have his increased resistances There we go. Even then though, even with better timing, the last plunge, as you can see, did a lot less than the third one, the fourth plunge, sorry, did a lot less than the third one because we still had Bennett buff, but I believe we lost Kazuha buff, we lost the BB. But if you have enough to damage to kill enemies with this amount of attacks, then getting more damage wouldn't really matter anyway. That being said, now I want to talk about the main team that I overlooked, is going for double cryo. Now, the main reason for doing something like this is because, again, right, if you're doing the setups that I mentioned earlier, you only get like three plunges with VV because you have to swap to Kazuha before Rosaria. Otherwise, you either can't really get a pyro swirl or 
getting the pyro swirl is rough and you'll end up with a pyro aura after your swirl so you won't be able to get a melt immediately and you'll have to wait which isn't ideal if you use a cryo character or honestly any sort of character where you can set up their stuff that are improving your team before you swap to bennett then you effectively create more time inside your bennett buff or your gummy now you can have diana on noblesse bennett on instructor you can technically do the other way around but i'm not a huge fan because the setups where you proc instructor on diana are kind of meh plus you care more about instructor uptime than you care about noblesse uptime because the em is more valuable one thing about this team is obviously you're getting crit rate from rosaria you're getting crit rate from cryo resonance you're getting crit rate from marie Chaussée. i'm using serpent spine because my other alternatives aren't actually leveled up i'm way over capped on crit rate right now so ideally you'd instead have him on four piece crimson witch or god forbid four piece vermilion or just use him on something like mailed flower instead but unfortunately i can't do that so it is what it is i'll just try my best to swap to artifacts that don't give too much crit rate but there's only so much i can do oh my favorite part is when garming says it's gaming time and gamed all over the abyss True. I'll just wait for them to be done with the cringe. But yeah, as you can see, this is a relatively decent team. And again, right, I don't have his C6, but I do have his constellations before that, and his C3 is helping a decent amount these 190ks would be something like 160 without it or something 150 somewhere in that ballpark anyways it's pyro again whatever we can show it against the pyro one we don't have any res red but who cares We can still one rotate it without res tread. Just barely, but we can. But yeah, so basically in this team, because you're setting up Diana's stuff before Bennett Burst, you don't lose Bennett Burst uptime to get what you're getting from Diana, which in this case is Noblesse plus 200 EM from the C6. On top of that, you're also getting Cryo Resonance. That's another 15% crit rate. And overall, it's just a reasonable amount to get. Now, obviously it means that you're losing out on grouping, which is not ideal, but it has the upside of being able to, well, not rely on VV setups, which can make things a lot easier to do. One thing that I haven't mentioned about VV setups yet is that, especially in AoE, when you're playing the team with, with Rosaria, if you want to get your VV setups without actually like having an overpowering Pyro Aura that takes a while to remove and therefore lose out on the opportunity to melt some of Gunning's damage, you need to make sure that Rosaria's E and Burst are hitting both enemies and the initial hitbox for the first hit of her E and the first hit of her Burst are pretty small. And your setups can get over by you not hitting those parts of, of her damage. An upside of this team is that the setup doesn't involve applying pyro to the enemy during the setup, and so you don't have any pyro to remove, so as long as any of the hits, either from Diona's burst, or Rosaria's burst, or skill, or Diona's skill, as long as anything hits them, and they're staying inside the circles, you won't lose your melts. And I think that that's one of the main reasons why this is one of the gumming teams that has felt the best to me in AoE situations. This abyss is pretty good for meld gumming because the enemies, like on the first side, they're not really mobile, they don't move much, they spawn relatively close to one another, so it's pretty easy, even with small AoE, to be hitting everything. That being said, as soon as you start getting into fighting mobile enemies, like on the second side, or honestly, almost any other abyss, the circle impact from Rosaria plus Bennett plus Diona is going to start to be felt. 
The second option that you have is you just go for a traditional vape team. But the main thing is with Freda, because you don't have control over her hydro, as soon as you start having to dodge or anything that will change your timings, because you can't just stop hitting with Farina, then Farina's hydro application and therefore the, the way that the hydro aura is going to be on the enemy, it starts being a lot more tight for your timing. And because of that, it's led to me being very cautious with the idea of assuming a pyro swirl in these teams with Farina. However, if you have been at C6, it's a lot easier. You just do the same setup at the start, but you just wait until your pyro disappears, then you hit, and then you have ample time to swap into Kazuha and get your swirl. Okay, I wanna quickly go over those setups. I've found some ways of making it easier to get setups without Bennett C6, and we're gonna be using Qianyan because we're, we're just gonna be using her normal attack for the for the swirl, and that means that it's a setup that could work on Sucrose, on Qianyan, on Kazuha, on any animal unit you're using. Let me also put him on Fav so I don't cringe about energy. So, you can do something like this. can use the C4, right? Oops. To get your swirl. If your timing is good enough, you can even get the swirl without the C4 by doing a whole E level one. The, the timing is very tight for that though. There we go. We got it. We got a power swirl. For any of these setups, if you are using Shenyun, instead of doing EQ1 for Rina, do QE into Shenyun Burst because Shenyun's Burst animation is about as long as Farina's burst animation. So the timing for your summon hits are gonna be very similar. If you have the C4, it's very easy. You just hold the Bennett, hold your E, and then get the C4 hit. Then get your Pyro Swirl. But yeah, so these are setups that, that can be somewhat unreliable at higher ping. And that is unfortunately still a reality of him. If you are playing these teams and trying to get your VD setups, you'll be vulnerable to, if there's multiple enemies, if it's a new wave, sometimes the Farina summons will behave weirdly and they'll attack the wrong enemy and it'll f*** up the timings. But getting back to, to what I talked about here, I was cautious in assuming the VV, and I looked at what happens if you can't get the VV. So let's take you guys through a rotation where you don't try to get VV. And because you're not going for VV, that means that your Bennett uptime is not spent getting VV, and is instead more uptime on your gumming, which can be good. All right, so we start with Farina. Kenyon. Bennett. Up my timing a little bit there, but as you can see, right, we're still getting very reasonable damage. I don't know if I conveyed well enough in the pre-release that if you do have Shenyun Farina, getting the Bennett C6 for the more reliable setups matters a lot less. It will start mattering a bit more when you're playing teams that aren't using Farina or Shenyun, like if you're trying to play him in, in vape teams that aren't using those. A character coming out in the same battle as him, Shenyun, who is a plunge buffer and who lets you like jump higher and buffs your plunge attack. And she works quite well with Gami. All right, for, for comparison, all right, we were our plunges were hitting 190k with Shanyun, and that's with VV Shanyun. If you're not doing VV setups, you could change her to Song of Song of Days Past or whatever it's called, and buff your damage a little bit more. If we compare those setups to using Kazuha instead, if you don't get your your, your Pyro Swirl, oh my God! Okay, whatever. 130k instead. Okay, this one didn't even hit. Yeah. So we lose like a solid third of our damage, basically. On top of that, we're not getting as many Farina Fanfare stacks because Bennett is a single target healer, not an AoE one. So especially starting second rotation onwards, where you're not healing the full team, you're, you're starting to lose out on a, on a lot of stuff. Which makes her a viable and arguably better option than even a unit like Kazuha, even in those meld teams, even though you're not gaining- I, I do think that after experiencing with both, I kind of 
prefer using Diona. The defensive utility she provides does feel really nice for him with the shield, but she's also viable if you don't try to get Pyro Swirls or if you do in teams like this. And then obviously the final important building block for his teams is his constellation. His C1 helps him be a bit more HP positive, lets him get away without Bennett a little bit more easily, but I think that all of his good teams will use Bennett, honestly. Okay, that I think is wrong. I don't think all of his good teams use Bennett. I think that his best teams use Bennett, but Gumming is a character that is very not great against mobile enemies when you're playing him with Bennett. And this Abyss is a very good example on the second side of enemies that just won't f***ing stay in place. But when the enemies don't stay in place, the Melt teams, right, they feel like shit. And the teams with Bennett don't tend to feel the greatest because you might have to run out of Bennett Circle. Now, characters that are very, very reliant on Bennett, well, it, that's the end of that. They're not, you know, you're not going to play them on the second side in this, in this abyss. But with Gumming, even though I do think that it's overall a worse team, he does have the option of being run without Bennett. And I think that I underestimated the option of doing that. I think that you're maybe even more reliant on having Xianyun in those teams. I really don't like them without Xianyun, but you can do something like on the second side of this abyss, like coming Xianyun and then Farina and then either Yelan or Singso. In a team like this, you don't have anything that's not mobile, which means that you can follow enemies. In this specific abyss, you'd rather run Yelan because you want a bow user for the Aeon Blight Drake. In general, I think that they're both viable. Yelan will offer you a bit more damage. Singso will offer you more defensive utility, whichever one you want. They should both have enough damage to clear stuff comfortably. This abyss though is a lot more more cringe than average. It's a lot. There's a lot more annoying enemies than there usually are, right? Rune Serpent and Wina. And then on top of that, you also have team building restrictions from the Aeon Blight Drake. This is not an average abyss. So I think that the team feels a bit better now than it will in general, or rather the alternatives to the, to the double Hydro team feel worse now than they usually do. And I think that the biggest downside to those double Hydro teams is that he's just not the best option in those teams. I'd rather be playing a character like Hu Tao or Bennett, like C6 carry Bennett. That being said, he is still reasonable. And if you like Gumming, you want to play him even in abysses that are cringe like this. He does have teams that do function without Bennett. And that is something I underestimated in the pre-release for sure. That he being said, good. they still run a healer. So this constellation still fucking sucks. <laughs> His C2 gives him attack whenever he overheals. It happen very easily if you're using either Bennett or Shenyun. This This can sometimes not happen if you're using Bennett. Bennett, so that's something I, I should have, I guess, mentioned a bit more. If your Bennett is not on a healing build, but it should still happen often enough to get good uptime on this. Is C3 increases his skill damage by three, and that's relatively significant. It's a bit less significant in those vape teams because rather than increasing 80% of your damage, the part that's coming from your skill, it's increasing like 60% of your damage because you have some damage coming from your plunge attacks instead. We're gonna get into this, but something that I hadn't realized before before release is that there's things you can use to get ease more often and that somewhat diminishes the value of using your normal plunge attacks. Most of the footage that we'd seen from leaks, people were just spamming his E. And when you're spamming his E, right, you get your first E, you get your second E, but then your E start getting slow. Three, four, five, Six. And that's it, right? Six before your mon your your ult runs out. However, there's a way to get more than that. But basically, what you can do instead is make sure that you use your E while Manchai is in the air, but you catch it before your plunge attack lands. That way, your first plunge attack will summon Manchai again. And that effectively lets you get one more. Anyway, 
anyways, what this does is it lets you get one more E, which especially in teams that can afford to spend more time on field on him, right? Teams that don't have short buffs like VV, that matters a lot and that can help you a lot. And so overall, it's good. You can even technically get more than seven because the direction in which Manchai gets launched is random. As far as I understand, at least it's random. So if it launches towards you, you can catch it basically immediately as soon as you E. And then if it does it towards you multiple times, it effectively reduces the travel time. If there is a wall behind your enemy, it also makes it a lot more likely that it will get launched towards you because it can't get launched towards the wall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go, we got eight. You can get more than eight if you're good, I'm not good, whatever. I, I showed the point, I've been here for like, it's fine. But this can also just happen with good RNG. You can force the RNG with a wall, but it can also just happen with good RNG. And his ER is potentially rough. There's a lot of teams where you end up losing a little bit of buff up time in order to set up more buffs. And when you do that, it starts becoming harder to do five E's. If you do five E's, your last E will probably be unbuffed, which is a D. Yeah, so I think that there's a bit more teams than I expected that do more than that. I do still think that's the case for the teams where you do VV setups, but for the Mel teams, for example, you do more than that. And like your energy is a lot less bad. That being said, it's still, it's still kind of a problem because he's a character who always does his damage with his ability that generates energy, which means that especially in those teams like the Melties where he's really the only source of damage, you're always going to kill the enemy before catching the particles from your E that killed the enemy. That's just what's gonna happen. If you kill them on an E that isn't the last E of your rotation, then that's even worse because that's even more particles that you can't catch. Point being, because of the way that he generates his energy being sustained, which I do mention of this but i, I want to like re-explain it basically because of how his his particle generation is sustained rather than front loaded he will in practice often need higher er requirements than if you were just against a target dummy hitting over and over and personally i have been running him on fav most of the time i use him because it just feels like shit otherwise and then C6 is obviously his best constellation. It gives him 80 crit value on his elemental skill. For context, I looked at his personal damage in- Okay, Judith. also, I did not mention enough that the C6 also increases his AoE, which is a very big deal. While it is possible, especially when you have to wait for Manchai midair anyways, right? You don't want to just spam your E because you get more ease if you wait midair. You can redirect yourself a little bit while you're midair, but you can't glide because if you do, you lose your empowered plunge attack. But just using your WASD keys or whatever movement things you have on your device, right? Uh, you can reposition yourself in the air a little bit. All right, I can go left. I can go right. I can try to go forward a little bit. But even then, right? As you could see there, my AoE didn't hit the enemy that was a little bit further. Now, in this abyss, it's not that bad because these enemies group themselves, right? And they're really close together. And it's easy to just keep chilling and hitting both of them. But once you start getting to the second wave where the enemies are a little bit more spread apart, you start really needing to make sure that your plunges are positioned well, right? And if they move away from each other even just a little bit, without C6, you just can't even hit both of them anymore. And this abyss is very much made to make characters like Gumming and plunge attackers with Shen Yun feel good on the first side. Enemies don't always group themselves up that closely together. And so his C6's AoE increase is a bit more relevant than I than I made it out to be. If you are C0, C6 Bennett, no Xian Yun. His best team is between the Farina and the Rosaria team. I would probably lean towards the Farina team where he'll get a little bit less personal damage, but the team overall will be better. But the Rosaria team is still fine. That being said, neither of those teams yeah. are all that insane. At C0 with Kazuha. I think I stand by that. I think that maybe not. I think I think the ability to, to use the double cryo versions 
I think it makes them a lot a lot more on equal footing rather than leaning more towards the Farina one. A little bit less because the Pyro Swirl is harder to do with the team with Farina than in the team with Rosaria, then it will help the team with Rosaria a lot more. And I think at that point, the team with Rosaria is probably slightly better. That I, I think it's a decent amount better. And again, I would probably run the version with double cryo over the version with uh with, with Animo. C0 and you have Xian Yun and Ben at C6, then I would say that his best team is the Farina team. And if you don't have Ben at C6, it's probably still the Rosaria team, and it does make that team a little bit stronger. I don't really love the Rosaria Xian Yun team anymore, especially because of how annoying it can be to not lose out on your melts in AoE due to your Rosaria E not being able to properly apply cryo to everything before you even swap to gummy, right? Your Zara, Rosera E in burst uh, to remove the, the pyro that you have. Uh, I think it's a bit worse than I than I thought it was. I do still really like this team, honestly, with or without Ben at C6, although I prefer it with Ben at C6, but the ability to basically get more ease from gumming with the Munchai juggling actually does make Ben at C6 a bit less relevant because you can do more ease so you don't have to be doing plunge attacks between your ease anymore. Like you're not punished as much for not having the infusion for on plunge attacks because you don't necessarily need to be doing plunge attacks. So obviously for the teams, you have his like vape, good, melt, good asterisk. I think it's generally worse than vape but it is something you can do if you don't have farina it can actually be better than the vape teams without farina mono pyro he's all right virgin and eh. chevreuse all right that's kind of it really yeah i think i think this is a pretty good assessment the specific variations of each teams some of them were a little bit off like i already mentioned but the overall assessment that he's pretty good in both vape and melt and not the greatest outside of it i definitely do stand by i have played him with mono pyro it just it just feels worse than the other pyro units you could be playing there so i don't love it it's kind of like playing shinyan in mono pyro basically except shinyan doesn't have good teams so if you want to play her you kind of have have to play her in teams like Mono Pyro, whereas Gumming does have good teams, and so you don't have to force him in teams where he's not that good to make him work. So there's a bit less of an argument to play him in Mono Pyro over characters like Shinyan, because if you want to play him, you can just play him in his good teams. That's not something you can do with Shinyan. All right, let's move on to the weapons. Okay, so very quickly want to go over this. I think that mainly because the double cryo team is a bit is, is better than I expected it to be. It does somewhat reduce the value of Serpent Spine because you're getting a Rosaria 15 crit rate up to 15 crit rate. You're getting cryo resonance because when you're melting, it, it's hitting an enemy affected by cryo. Therefore, you get the cryo resonance. That's another 15. But then if on top of that, you're running Marie Chaussee, that's another 36. That's a lot of crit. And then if on top of that, you're running Serpent Spine, it starts bringing your base crit rate pretty damn high high and if on top of that you have c6 you have too much crit and yeah unfortunately there is such a thing as too much crit and you can reach that point with him with serpent spine and so because of that if you have c6 mainly but also just if you're using him on marie Jose and you have a lot of crit rate substats there are a decent amount of situations where well either the crit damage five stars or claymores or even just rain slasher or mailed flower are better than serpent spine that being said if your crit ratio is not getting scuffed by Serpent Spine, it is still his best weapon. That is with Shenyun. If you're playing him in the double cryo team again, right, on top of not synergizing as well with a crit rate from Serpent Spine, he also cares more about his base attack because you don't have Shenyun being a big portion of the motion value. Basically, Shenyun's additive damage makes it so that you you care more about stats that increase the additive damage you get from Shenyun, like crit, like damage percent, like elemental mastery, than you do about attack, which does not increase the part of your damage you're getting from Shenyun, which is part of why Serpent Spine is so good. And yeah, I, I, I've i mentioned this before, but I usually just run him on Fav because I cannot be bothered running him on Serpent Spine. In Abyss, it feels like shit because you always kill enemies before you get your burst back. And in Overworld, it feels like shit because, well, it's Overworld. <laughs> uh, yeah, for, for artifact sets, pretty big. Yeah, Marijose is his best set. 
But if you're overcapping on crit, that's obviously not good. Uh, you can use Remelion, you can use Crimson Witch. I didn't, I don't think I ended up mentioning it, but you can also use Gilded Dreams. I guess one last piece of like quote unquote warning before you decide to go for him, if you do have C6 Bennett, is that from what I've looked at, his teams, like his better teams, they're good, but they're not as good as using Bennett as your carry <laughs> and adding a second Hydro yeah. support. Here's yeah, things. I think that's the case if you're getting Xian Yun and you have like Farina, because then the Bennett carry teams are just a lot better. But if you don't have either of these and you would be playing him in uh, in the double cryo melt teams, he will perform better than a Bennett carry with Chongyun or some shit, right? Like that, it's, it's going to be better than that. And yeah, I guess I should also compare him to, to Deluke. Generally, he's going to be a bit worse at C0 than Deluke is. But then there's also the fact that Deluke generates less energy for the rest of your team, which can actually make it hard to potentially reach the ER requirements you need on your other teammates to even get their burst. But if you do manage to get that ER, Deluke should perform better generally than he does. That being said, once you start getting constellations on him, he will outperform Deluke. And I'm saying that I realize yeah. that Deluke is not very good right now. Deluke will be a lot better with Xianyun. Okay, so again, right, this is another situation, the same thing as Bennett. I think that is indeed the case if you have Farina and Xianyun, but his double cryo melt teams, in my opinion, are a lot better than the Deluke ones. I know that the Deluke cryo melt teams can actually be fine, but again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think in the post release, in order for those Deluke teams to be fine, you need to get Dragon Strikes. If you miss your Dragon Strikes, they're not very good. It just makes it harder for me to be like, oh yeah, just play Deluke, like, eh. I do think that if you're comparing C0 gumming to Deluc, again, assuming you can meet the ER requirements, I would rather play Deluc if you're doing a Xianyun team with Farina, but in basically any of the other teams, I'd rather play Gomming. So I think overall, this pre-release was mostly on the good side, but I do think it was a pretty big oversight how much I underestimated the double cryo melt teams. I think that everything relating to the teams other than the double cryo melt teams is on the money, like it's 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 pretty good, but the double cryo melt teams are a lot better than I gave them credit for in the pre-release, and that does mean that that's a pretty big thing that I missed. So not the worst one because the majority of it is still pretty good. It's still stuff I stand by, but also far from the best because that's a pretty big thing to to be missing. It is what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the post release. As usual, I, I do these post release analysis because a it's useful for you guys to to have an analysis of a character once I've actually tested it rather than before any testing is done, but also too to hold myself accountable for when I make mistakes when I'm wrong. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope uh, I hope it was useful for for all of you and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye you too.